Okay then folks, we're now entering the Coombs of Holford. Um, we've had a walk all the way around there. Miles I've walked. Well, it might not be miles, what it is, it's up and down, it always seems further. So I'm going to video going down into the valley, into the Coombe. Hodder's Coombe. Um, Holford Glen. And uh, it probably isn't even going to be dark enough for um, the deer to be brave enough to come. But I see the best coom I should have gone to, to down would have been further over, um, what I call Holford Glen. But um, I decided not to do that. I'm going to wait for the ferns to die down before I do that. I haven't done it for years. If I still remembered where it was. I had to look more than once to make sure, but I thought, no, I'll leave that. It's very isolated, that bit. Because it, it's got a funny en exit. Not Unless you know it, you wouldn't think there was an exit. And uh, so I'm going to leave that. Normally I'm walking up this way. About a year ago, I, I brought Zora and Maggie down here after we'd been to um, Old Fox and House. <sighs> yes, but this is going to be a nice, peaceful walk through the coom. It's always a bit of a strain on your feet when you go down on top of stones, actually in the beginning. Like I said, last time I walked, I was right on the very, very top. This morning I was walking on the top over. Right on the top. Hello, so cows. Wow, that's uh, something I hadn't seen before. I've never seen cows up here. Now, can is that a deer I can see, or is that a I can see something brown in the distance. Wait a minute. Is that cows or deer? That's deer. That's deer there. Two adults and one baby. At least what I can see at the moment. I've often seen them there. Oh, there's some more there, look. Oh, somebody coming. Sorry, I just nearly got you in the de deer on the hill. I'm just... Zooming in on them. Huh? Deer up there. Yeah, deer up there, yeah. yeah. Nearly got you in me camera though. <laughs> You're brave you lot doing that, I tell you. You're very brave. Yeah, there's quite a few of them. One, two. Oh, that's a little, that's a baby. Oh, that's a mum. Yeah, there's a few up there. Maybe they've been to the stream and they're making their way up. Dunno. I often see them there. That's like a, a clipped patch where they seem to hang out. Yeah, they are all up there, look. Deer, under the tree. Well, 
at least I say I can say I've seen some today. <sighs> I mean, it could be that uh, I won't see any more now once I go down, especially if I keep talking. I always see them on that patch. That's a nice little group of them around a the tree, though, isn't it? Just look at that view down there, look. Look at that. And under there I can hear the bubbling brook. Remembering again, as I've told everyone before, Coleridge and Wordsworth. Walked here summer evenings like I'm doing. Listen to the bubbling brook. They looked for its source further upstream there. And they would walk here, and Dorothy, Wordsworth's sister, would come here. And um, they would make their poetry, talk about the world and the state of the world and all that. So they're here. They're here. Great minds are here. We've had a bit of rain. Well, we had quite a lot. I think there's more to come. So, uh... So this is Sheila, I don't know what video this is, um, not got a clue. Now next month, September going into October is what's called the rucking season, where the stags link horns and fight and that. That's not quite so good to get near them when that's happening. Now this, this is Adder country, of course, but I the snakes now have gone back into their holes under stones for the night. I would have thought they would know it's time to go to bed. But I wouldn't be surprised there haven't been one or two out today, sunbathing. So here we go. The sun is going down. It's telling me to get a move on. It's lighting my path. I forgot to bring a torch, do you know, I don't ever go anywhere without a torch. Today I forgot a few things. But sometimes when you're spontaneous and it's a bit chaotic, you know, there, there, there's joy out of it. There's joy out of it. Oh, it's so lovely. I mean, I just, just imagine I could be sat in the cabin now. Well, that's my flat. Getting cabin fever. Looking out the window at the concrete jungle. Or I could be here. Enjoying this. They, like I said, they do burn the bracken now and again. I don't know if they're... There's a special name for it as well, which I've forgotten. But it's all for good reasons it's done. Yeah, look at that going down. Look. You better get a move on, Shell. Get a move on, girl. It's not so bad once we... I mean, I don't mind going down here anyway, but... Uh, after we've gone through the coon bit, then the houses, cottages start appearing anyway. People that live right out in the middle of nowhere. But this bit, no, there's nothing. It's just be pure beauty here. Pure beauty. Isn't it? I've seen it even beauty more beautiful, actually, when it's, there's been other sort of colours. Um... And of course, if we came up here in the winter, which I rarely do, um, I ought to really eh? make some more efforts to come out here at different times of the year. <sighs> Just fitting it all in, really. Fitting it all in. There's a lot to do. I've been exploring the Mendips a lot over the last couple of years. And um, that's taken me a lot of time, actually. <sighs> 
I do lots of videos and photos, but I don't know if anyone will ever want to see them. If you know what I mean. I've got no idea. I wonder if I can get through there without falling in a bog. This is where the ticks get you, see, when you cut through like that. You might have been escaped all day. They're just waiting for you to come by. Yeah, the sun's going down. And you're in the moors. It's the Black Panther. Well, there's that's another reason I didn't want to go through the coombe late. Um, through that other coombe. Um, I seen a ripped pieces um deer once up there and I thought my that's been savaged by something. So that to bring a big deer like that down. 